This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. This is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And as you know, we're a financial education company and this is gonna be another great educational program. But we're also gonna be promoting a very important financial education event. It's on June 9th and 11th. It's called Limitless. And it's at the Weston Carolyn in Scottsdale, Arizona. And today you're gonna find out who should come, who should not come. But if you're coming, what are you going to find out about? Because we are, again, financial education. And uh, given what's going on in the world today, I think you'd better step up your education. Because I think we're in serious financial trouble right now. We're in serious, I mean, the repo market collapse again, which it did in 2008. And everybody, th- I, I meet people and say, well, I'm just gonna get into real estate. I'm going, now? You know, where were you 10 years ago when everything was moving up at high rates of speed? We had dinner a couple of nights ago. This person says, yeah, I'm gonna get a real estate license. I said, now? Do you know, I'm mean, going, where the heck are these people? I mean, the Fed's gonna raise rates. We're at war with Russia. I mean, what the heck are you guys thinking? So anyway, it's a very, 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 very important event. Again, it's June 9th and 11th. It's here in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's the Western Carolyn. And with me today are from my dearest friends, Ken McElroy. I mean, we have made literally millions and millions of dollars together after 2008 when it yeah. crashed. And John McElroy, who, I mean, um, John McGregor, John McElroy, <laughs> I'm even McElroy. promoted. John McGregor, who, who represents the paper asset side. Because all of you uh, guys out there with that 401k, especially the old guys, you might be in serious, <laughs> serious rough. financial trouble because um, America stopped producing. You know, we stopped making things. And all America has done is produce bubbles. So we have a bubble in real estate, bubble in stocks, bubble in bonds. Everybody's happy, they think they're getting rich today, and I've never seen it so frightening. Now, on the other side of the coin, as Kenny knows, Ken McElroy's now, he and I know is that after 2008, we just barred our asses off and bought real estate as it crashed. The problem, this is the everything bubble. This is the biggest bubble in world history. So it's going to be big. So this is, again, the limitless event, June 9th and 11th, the Western Carolyn, Scottsdale, Arizona. My guests today are Ken McElroy and John McGregor. So John, you're the the new guy to the, not the new guy, but you and I, you know, we're neighbors in Hawaii. You're a financial planner, which I had to bite my tongue many, many times, but, what do you, th- I mean, give us a little bit of your background and, and you know, cause I wouldn't be in, fin- I wouldn't be in paper assets. I wouldn't be in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. I mean, we're in a huge bubble. There's no question about it. We're, this is the perfect storm. I mean, you just talked about the repo market. We've got interest rates that are going to skyrocket. Um, the feds already announced it and inflation's out of control. You know, I'm paying $6 a gallon for gas. We got supply chain issues. Uh, U.S. the Ukrainian situation that could turn into World War III in any second right now, and um, so we're in the perfect storm right now. And I do see we're heading for a recession very quickly. I think so too. And that's going to wipe out the four hundred one k and also the pension market. Well, this is this is the book here I wrote. You know, with another friend of mine is called "Who Stole My Pension," and that's going to be one of the biggest problems for my generation, the boomer generation. Because we were the first generation with a 401k. The 401k came in, I think, in 1974. And we're going, oh, Jesus is going to save us. You know, they're going to give us a pension. But in my opinion, it was one of the biggest screw jobs ever. Because you're putting people who know nothing about investing, and they're now counting on Wall Street to keep them alive into their late years. So here's this book, it's written by Ted, Ted Sedell, and he makes his fortune suing pension funds because they're criminals. They're criminals, they just rip people off. Anything you wanna say about what Ted, you read this book? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm in that book a little bit, but um, 
I've seen it all throughout my career and I've been doing this for 27 years. I'm working with thousands of individuals and small business owners of all walks of life, rich, poor, young, old, male, female, and all in between. And so often I've seen people come to me and say, oh, well, you know, my pension's guaranteed. It's in writing. It's a, it's a, it's a contract. They assured me. And, and they've worked 30, 35 years busting their tail, thinking that they're going to get a lifetime income. And then their spouse, their surviving spouse is going to continue on only to find out that these, these pensions are now being challenged in court successfully. And when I say successfully, that means the company's winning the employee, the long-term employee that gave everything they had to have this, this golden parachute is seeing their benefits cut somewhere of 30, upwards of 50%. And, um, and this is only the beginning. And Ted talks a lot about that in that book because we're now starting to see a wave of lawsuits that are happening because there's no money in these pension plans. They're underfunded. So I don't care if there's a contract or not. If there's no money, there's no money. And so John and I grew up in Hawaii together. I mean, uh, Obama's his good friend and classmate. Oh, God. (laughs) But Nancy Pelosi is your buddy and all this stuff. I mean, it's... Yes, it was, we have, we've had a great time. We both played rugby together for the Hawaii Harlequins, and so we come from a different point of view. And so I encourage you to write this book here, right? What, what is your book called? Yeah, so this was, this was Robert's idea, actually. It's the top 10 reasons the rich go broke. And so for years, I've been telling Robert these stories of these, these train wreck stories, as I call them, you know, people that had everything that I personally knew, and then they just lost it all due to a common underlying, actually a psychological aspect that not just the rich have, but most, most people have in society, and that's what I talk about. And I get to really the core, the core reason people struggle financially. The core reason people, most people, 78% of people today are living paycheck to paycheck. Why 65% of people could not come up with $500 for an emergency expense. So this book breaks it down based on all the experience I've had with you know thousands of people and gets to the core of why people struggle. So, so John and I, like, like I said, rugby players, I believe for the Hawaii, Hawaii Harlequins rugby team, and I'm talking to him and he's telling me about all the rich people we knew in Hawaii mm-hmm. who are going broke. I'm going, you gotta tell that story. Because as I said, I, you know, in 1974 was the first uh, 401k. It was called ERISA, Employee Retirement Income Security Act. And I was still in the Marine Corps and I was flying out of Hawaii. Um, and I went to listen to these pitches on how to sell a 401k. And I said, these guys are lying through their teeth. Because the advantage I had is I had a rich dad and I had a poor dad. And my poor dad was the village idiot. He was a PhD, which stands for poor, helpless, and desperate. He ran the school system for the state of Hawaii, and he thought the 401k was wonderful. I'm going, you gotta be kidding me. And my rich dad was my best friend's father. He goes, oh my God, boy, talk about a license to steal money from stupid people called employees. So I came from a different, so this is 74, I'm still in the Marine Corps. And the first thing my rich dad said to me, if you're gonna be a rich man, you better learn two things right now, be an entrepreneur, you know, but he says, you've got to learn how to sell. And secondly, you've got to know real estate because real estate is debt and taxes. And that's, what, what do you mean debt and taxes? So in 1974, I took my first real estate course and opened my eyes up because you don't need money to buy real estate and you pay no taxes on top of it. So just before I get out of the Marine Corps, you know, I get a job with Xerox, learn how to sell. So I got sales and then I understood real estate. So why am I a rich man today? Because I took two courses, learn how to sell and learn about real estate. And my poor dad, the PhD says, go back to school, get your MBA and get your PhD. And I'm going, then I'd wind up like you. <laughs> a poor, highly educated man with a 401k. And then I used to go to all of these little seminars on why you should buy a 401k, and these school teachers were lining up in droves because the next profession after being a school teacher was to sell 401ks. And then I meet John, I said, you know, so I didn't like John at first, I said, you're you're the enemy as far as I'm concerned. But John used to train people how to sell and all this stuff, so I, so we, you know, we, we come from the same point of view. It's education, not selling people. I mean, isn't that the correct? One hundred percent. Yeah, right. absolutely. So then, when I met Ken McElroy after all, rich dad, poor dad, back then, I mean, people. Were, this was in the 2000, 2008, The repo market collapsed. Lehman went down. You know, I'm on CNN telling Wolf Blitzer Lehman's going down because I study all this stuff. 
And I meet Kenny and people are flipping houses. So I meet Kenny and he tells me he's a real estate guy. And I say, yeah, you're probably a flipper. You know, and I hate flippers too. I don't like flippers and I don't like 401k salespeople. <laughs> and I start talking to Kenny and he says, no, I don't flip properties. I'm like, oh my God. So Kenny was one of the first guys I met that actually followed what my rich dad taught me to do, which is how do you acquire real estate with nothing down and use 100% debt and uh, pay no taxes. So with that, I mean, Kenny and I have made freaking multi-millions of dollars. We're billions of dollars in debt, but debt makes people with financial education rich. So what happened after 2008, after the repo market, after Lehman went down, as I called it on CNN, we made fortunes because it was a crash. So you're saying, well, well you're telling us it's gonna crash, man. I'm saying it's gonna be the biggest opportunity of your life. And so that's why Ken, John, a bunch of other friends are gonna be at Limit, Limitless June 9th and 11th, Western Carolina, Scottsdale, Arizona. So Kenny and was welcome to the program and tell us what's gonna happen at Limitless June 9th and 11th in Western Carolina, Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you, thank you. Well. First of all, I, um, as you know, Robert, we get, we get asked to speak at lots of stuff and, and, um, I got asked to speak at another real estate event, another real estate seminar. And, and I, like you, um, love real estate, but I don't think now's the time to, to invest in it or anything like that. So I said, listen, if we do a financial education seminar to teach people about all the things that are coming, you know, so that's when we started putting our team together, all the, obviously all the advisors, Rich Dad Advisors. Rich Dad Advisors. Uh, we got George Gammon. Uh, and John's coming. We, we got a, um, a really a, an all-star team coming to speak. And and really, it's all education, all teaching, all learning, and, and not investing. You know, this is, if you're, if you're trying to, it's 9th, 10th, and 11th in Scottsdale. But if you're, if you're new and, and trying to find a real estate deal, then this is probably not the event for you. This is, this is about managing your money, taking a look. And that's why I'm excited. John's coming, you know, his book is amazing, first of all, but uh, you know, that there's always been a big struggle or struggle. There's always been a push pull between wall street and real estate. In fact, if you go on right now, you know, it's all about stocks and, and, you know, all about wealth management, all, and, and it's always been a grab for people's money. And, and, uh, you know, real estate is, is, um, uh, you know, the opposite pretty much. And, and so what we wanted is that's why when John's going to sh show up, he's going to talk about the industry and, and, you know, how, what they do and, and what you can do if, if you have a lot of, of your money in, let's say a financial, with a financial planner or in stocks or bonds or whatever, just things that you can do. Not, you know, not that you need to move it to real estate, just things you can do based on what's happening today. Cause it's kind of scary what's happening with all these bubbles. Yeah. Let me just say, this we're, we're going to a depression, possibly a depression. And as John talks about it, I mean, people have no money. So when our buddy Joe Biden took off the Keystone XL pipeline, inflation went through the roof that wipes out the poor because they can't afford to eat. Because oil, I'm an oil guy, I went to school because I work for Standard Oil. When the price of oil goes up, fertilizer goes up. Fertilizer goes up, food goes up. So the poor in America, I mean, how, how close to disaster are the poor in America? Within days, I mean, that's no exaggeration. I mean, it's coming. There's no question about it. I mean, I can ramble off all the statistics you want. And the traditional methods of financial planning does not work, period. So if you have a 401k, you know, like I'd say, you drop back and punt on first down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because you may, we're not going to tell you what to do, but maybe you'll find out why you should make changes. Because the good news is that's when you get really rich. That's like if Neiman Markin was having a sale on Louis Vuitton, you know, every consumer would be lined up there. But I, I'm, I was talking to this woman the other night, she said, oh, I finally got it. I'm, I'm gonna get my real estate license and start flipping real estate. And I said, this is not the time. Oh, no, I'm gonna quit my job. I'm going, you gotta be kidding me. But that's how stupid people are. So this is gonna be the biggest bubble in world history that's gonna bust. I think America's going into the next depression, but for those who are prepared for it, and so Limitless is about those preparing for the biggest crash. 
They're not what we I, with the Marine Corps called the FNG, you know, the, the new guy. This is not for new guys, right? Right, right. And, you know, one of the things that you talk a lot about with specifically Buckminster Fuller is, you know, you got to work with the forces, not against them. And these things are coming. And uh, obviously we're all trying to figure it out. And so you're going to have varying points of view, which is, I think is really healthy because today, especially in the media culture, uh, that's not really welcomed. So you're going to have people that are going to talk about deflation, people that are going to talk about inflation, people that are going to talk about house crashes and people that are going to talk about the markets going up. And I actually think that that's healthy. That's good. It is good. And but so if you have a 401k and you're 65 years old, you could be toast. You could be toast. Because your future is gone. Again, this is not for newbies. This is not for FNGs. You know, this is for people who have, know we're in trouble. We don't have to convince you. You know, you, you, you know that you've been sold a bill of goods and you're, you're coming to prepare for the biggest turndown in world history. So when we come back, we'll be going mm -hmm. into more what to expect at the Limitless Expo on June 9th through 11th, Western Carolina, Scottsdale, Arizona. This is not for you guys or people wanting to hope to find a house to flip. This is not it. Are you hoping for a tip on a 401k? Please don't come. We'll be right back. Inflation is at a 40 year high. The Fed is tightening up and top firms predict returns under 5% for the next decade. No wonder a recent JP Morgan report declared alternative assets are no longer optional. And of all the platforms for alternative investing, there's one that's a no brainer. It's called Masterworks. Masterworks has solidified itself as the platform for investing in contemporary art. You can access exclusive investments from names like Banksy and Picasso for just a fraction of what billionaires pay to diversify their portfolios. Since 2020, Masterworks has sold three paintings with each returning over 30% net IRR to investors. And their new offerings usually sell out in hours. 30%, that's pretty wild. If you want to get in early, go to masterworks.io, create an account, check out what they have, and invest in their offerings. And our subscribers get to skip their wait list at the special link in the description below. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And once again, we're a financial education program. We don't make recommendations to buy this, do that. We definitely don't say get a 401k because I think it was one of the biggest ripoffs I've ever seen. And like I said, it came in 74 and I returned from Vietnam in 73 and I started going into taking these financial planning workshops and things like this. I'm going, oh my God, these poor people are being set up. So my poor dad was a PhD, you know, in, in education and he kept saying, get your master's degree and get your PhD. And I said, I'm gonna wind up just like you. PhD is poor, helpless, and desperate. And now, you know, I wrote this book here with um, Ed Sedell, Ted Sedell, and these pensions are gonna go down just as the economy goes down. I think this is the biggest economic bubble in world history. You know, I don't, at least for, for me, we're at war with Russia, Biden is going hat in hand to Venezuela and to uh, Iran to try and get oil, but he cuts off US oil. Now that's good news for me because I sell oil. I mean, you know, we had Mike Maselli here this weekend and um, oil went from $30 a barrel to $130 a barrel. I make more money, but America is gonna go broke. And that's why this workshop called Limitless June 9th and 11th, Weston Kierland, Scottsdale, Arizona, is probably the most important thing you can do this year is how do you prepare for the decline and wipeout of America, but not just America, the world popular, world, world uh, financial markets right now. Because America stopped producing and started blowing bubbles. And we're in the biggest bubble in world history. So we have my friend here, uh, John McGregor, both from Hawaii. He's the author of the, the book, what the 10 top reasons why the rich go broke. And he worked with the financial planning industry, but he is the same position that I do is prepare people for this time, right? What do you want to say about what's happening right now with the uh, bubble economy? Yeah. And by the way, you know, the 401k was never meant to be the sole retirement vehicle and now it is. 
because companies are no longer offering pensions. Those that do are pulling them back. And we just talked about earlier, uh, we're seeing these, these pensions challenged after the fact. And having on top of that, significant number of pensions across the country, across the world, in fact, whether it's corporate or, 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 or public, they're severely underfunded. And well, not only that, they've been stolen. And they've been stolen from. And these in pensions are invested in stocks, bonds, real estate, and commodities. And when the when it all hits the fan, it's going it, to, there's no way they're going to be able to make it. And we're their, close, right? And we're close. three years. Uh, absolutely. And then take, and take into account Social Security, which will be, be bankrupt in 2034. If you just do the math. That's a factual matter bankrupt in 2034 when you figure that 40% of people will be 100% reliant on their social security payments. It's a train wreck. I probably overuse that word. Now, um, so I, w- I pulled up an article by Susie Orman. And My buddy. It, yeah, your friend Susie. And it said, uh, we're in a retirement crisis. Five things you must do. And I'm like, yes, we're in a retirement crisis, but it's budget, Save money. Cut up your credit cards. Cut up your credit cards. Put money into your 401k. And then there was a last one was uh, something about, you know, understand money. I don't know. It's just, that's the kind of advice people are getting today. And that's why I'm so excited to be a part of this event, because we're going to get to the heart of why people are suffering financially, period. So give us a little bit of background. How did you become, you know, the dark side, the financial planning side? (laughs) I know, I know, from the evil empire. Well, my dad was in banking, so I wanted to do banking as well as investing. And, and, being a, in the financial world, I was able to do both. So I did a lot of work with individuals and also small businesses doing a lot of lending and mortgage stuff. It wasn't just all investing in financial planning. And then I, I, I went off and started climbing the corporate ladder. I was a national sales director. I worked for a very large money manager. I was a national retirement director. And got to a point, though, and I'd always been working with individuals no matter what role I was in. But I finally walked away 10 years ago because of the frustration I had with my clients. And we would sit down, I'd show them the graphs, I'd show them that they're headed for disaster if they don't change their ways. And they'd look at me and they'd go, okay, John, we're all in, what should we do? I'd lay out the tactics, the strategies and the, and the, and, and the plan. We would high five, we'd pinky swear, we'd shake, we'd hug. We'd all agree we're committed to the plan. And now these aren't poor people. These are high income individuals. These are two income households. So this isn't poor people. And as soon as they left my office, they were on their way to Best Buy to buy a flat screen TV <laughs> on an already maxed out credit card. So all that planning, all that information, all that stuff had a shelf life of like 15 minutes before they're back <laughs> to their old habits and their old uh, behaviors back to what I call living on Payne Island. And again, these aren't poor people. These are high income earning people. Educated because, people. Educated people. Because if you're making this much money, you're spending this. If you're making this, you're spending that. It doesn't matter how much income you're making. Everyone knows what they need to do with money. Those five things that Susie Orman said, everyone knows to do it, but they don't do it because this isn't an information issue. This is a behavioral issue. And the only way to change these financial behaviors is at the core of your mental programming. And that's what I get to. And so I've left all that traditional financial planning stuff to really address the real reason most people struggle. And that's what we talked about this weekend. We had Rollo and all these characters here. And power is the ability to do. So there's kinds, different kinds of power and things like this. But the biggest power is the power to change internally. And I've finally realized people don't have that power. They're going to keep going down the suicide cliff no matter what. And that's your frustration. 100%. It's, it's no different than the health industry, right? We all know we need to eat better and diet. and, and diet and exercise. But, but they we won't do it. We won't do it. Because it's can't a, do it. It's a behavioral issue. Right. And anyway, so with that said, that's called the um, Limitless, June 9th through 11th, Weston Carolyn, Scottsdale, Arizona. And Ken McElroy and I have been friends for years and years and years. And like I met Ken right after the repo market collapsed in June, I mean, in 2008, repo market collapsed again. Um, as George Gammon always talks about, America produces nothing, but we just blow bubbles by lowering interest rates and printing trillions of dollars. So in 2008, when the market crashed, Kenny and I borrowed millions and millions of dollars because they were giving away the best investments in the world. And it's gonna come again, but this time I think it's gonna be more pain than last time. Anyway, Ken, give us a little bit of your background about how you got into the real estate world. 
Sure. Yeah. So, so uh, I got into real estate in the, in the late eighties of all things uh, managing. And then um, I was like, man, I'm managing for all these rich guys and I'm making them lots of money. And, and uh, uh, I need to be on the other side of the desk. So I started buying, ran out of money, started syndicating and built my businesses from there. I've had lots of businesses. And today we've got uh, a couple billion dollars under management of where the, where the general partner we own, uh, we manage them, build them, buy them, hold them. And as you know, we don't really exit on hardly anything. So we have a staff of a little over 300 and, and, um, you know, we teach as you know, our investors are amazing people. And, and, uh, that most of them were in the stock market at one point. And it's really interesting because being an entrepreneur, one of the first things my rich dad taught me is, is, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, the purpose of a business is to buy real estate. And people go, what? No, it's supposed to, no, you buy real estate with it. And the average person has never heard that. And I use debt and I pay no taxes. So we've got Tom Wheelwright will be there explaining on taxes, right? Yep. So you better learn about taxes because they'll never teach you that at school. It's your largest expense in your entire life is tax. If you don't know how to manage it, then you're an idiot. Yeah. That's why they don't teach it in school. It's crazy. And then what most people don't know is that in 1971 is that the Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. So the dollar became debt. They could print it and they had to raise taxes to collect the money back. And so that's why when Tom stands up there and he says, we don't pay taxes, it drives people crazy because they think it's illegal. And nothing we do is illegal, is it, Kenny? No, gosh, no, no, no. The, the IRS basically tells you where to put your money. It literally, uh, the you know, the tax code is a Bible that says this is what you can and can't do. And so as long as you just follow the pages that say this is what you can do, and one of the things they want is housing. One of the things they want oil. is oil, you know, yeah, and food. So, so they give subsidies and tax breaks to people who produce those things, period. That's the way the world is. So the, the program is June 9th, 10th, 11th. That's three days. You're going to learn so much in three days. Your head will hurt. But we're preparing for the biggest crash in world history. So if you're a newbie, you know, what Marines called FNG, the FNU guy, don't come. Because you're going to hope to get a real estate license and flip a house. This is not what you're supposed to do. Or buy a foreign... 401k of all things, or listen to Su go listen to Susie Orman. <laughs> I mean, I've shared the stage with her; it was painful, but anyway, I did. Or Dave Ramsey, live debt free. This is not your seminar. I mean, you are so far in the dark ages; it's sad. So, Kenny, who else is coming to this limitless event? Who's going to be teaching? Oh my gosh! Well, so here's the here's the cool part. It, you know, all of us study. And so, uh, yeah, all of us study. And I think that's important. So we're all going to have our own opinions and viewpoints on things, but I guarantee you, uh, we're going to have like 40 speakers. Most of those are going to come out of this crash in good shape, right? And that is the point. The, the point is, is, you, you know, this is not, you know, flipping a house and trying to time the market. This is, this is about your real estate. License. These are, these are strategic people that are trying to do strategic things and have done strategic things. So you're going to have, we're going to have a, a number of entrepreneurs there. We're going to have, um, uh, keep people that have started businesses locally, people that are doing, um, a lot of real estate, a lot of gold and silver. We're going to have some crypto people there with financial planning people there. Um, and it's, it's a, it's really for entrepreneurs, side hustles, trying to figure out a way to mitigate the, the, the storm that's coming. And again, the problem is power is the ability to change. And that's really the sad part. You know, it's like we had Dr. Nicole, you know, she can tell them about diet and excess, but people don't have the discipline to change. This weekend, I was really, really kind of disturbed by a couple of people who've been with me for years. They haven't done anything different with me for 17 years. They do the same old thing. They cannot change, but they're smart people. They just cannot change. So if you're one of those people, please don't come because you better be willing to change because we're going into the biggest crash in world history, probably a depression. Now the good news is we're gonna make a lot of money. Unfortunately, it's gonna be money that other people are losing. So any other comments on that, Kenny? Yeah, I, you know, this is a personal responsibility issue. You know, I think what in John's business, you know, and, and I see it like, 
people turn their money over to someone else uh, and then they move on. And it's like they don't even, like it doesn't even exist. I know that if somebody took my money out of my savings account, I'd be all over. I'm like, where did that go? But apparently they just don't do it when it goes to a pension or a 401k or into these uh, RSP plans, huh? I'll add to that. I call it the chicken dinner syndrome. They get invited to the free chicken dinner, right? And they show up and they're impressed. They like the the advisors and the, the the slick presentation. And without hesitation, they're waiting, ready to hand over their hard-earned money without any questions. I mean, I saw it myself. They're like, hey, John, we saw you on TV or you referred to whatever. Just take my money. I would try to explain, hey, this is how much I charge. This is how it works. No, 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 no. I don't have time. Just take my money. And that's probably the, the most dangerous words I've ever heard in this industry. I trust my advisor. I mean, nothing can go wrong. Uh, I mean, uh, but what's, what's worse than that is John just, you know, John goes nuts. Well, I won't mention the name of the firm. This is what we're fiduciary. Oh. We're fiduciary. They're all over the airways. We're fiduciary. We don't make money unless you, I don't know what lie they're telling. So without mentioning the company's name, what we, are they saying? We do, we do things differently. Oh, it's just such nonsense. We're a fiduciary. That word fiduciary is the biggest marketing scam in the financial industry. It really is. It's like these advisors think they're holier than now because they're fiduciaries. You want to know who the biggest fiduciary was in this country? Bernie Madoff. <laughs> <laughs> he was a fiduciary, right? He was a 2008 so, poster child for the... Yeah, so for anyone listening to this, do not fall for that fiduciary. In fact, I can make an argument that a fiduciary is even less secure than a non-fiduciary. We don't want to go down go well, tell, tell them the story. You, you went to that chicken dinner where they have all oh, the yeah. rich people. Well, the guy's an actor? Yeah. The, the guy was on stage, and he goes, he's not even, he's not even a financial planner. What, it's what? A, a massive financial firm, and they've got satellite offices all over the country. And I kept hearing the radio commercials, and I go, I got to check this out. Because I do a lot of due diligence on other competitors, and I want to know whatever whenever everyone else is doing. And so I went to the luncheon and everyone was over 65, 70 years old. And you could tell they were ready to write the check before the presentation <laughs> even started. I'm not kidding. And and the big hook is a chocolate chip cookie. And, you know, that's my kryptonite. And I was even more dis disappointed when that cookie really sucked. I mean, it really was just wrapped in plastic. And it was all... so anyway, so they do the normal presentation, the same song and dance. You know, this is how the markets work. This is how we invest money and so forth. And so I Afterwards, every single person signed up for their consultation, which is unheard of, right? I mean, you don't have that kind of a close ratio in these events. And so I, had, I meet with the local advisor and this is young girl um, who really didn't even make it out of basic training at a previous firm, but she was given a script, told exactly what to do. And I started asking questions. And the first thing she says, like, wow, no one's ever asked me these questions. And but was she hot? <laughs> that was a long time ago, but she just wanted me to, she wanted to end the conversation, move on because there's other people in the, in the waiting room. So I finally leaned in. I said, you know what, by the way, who was that guy that was presenting? Do I get to meet him? Do I work with him? And she's just like, shh, shh, shh. she leans in. She goes, don't tell anybody. He's not a financial advisor. I'm like, he's a Hollywood actor. And my jaw dropped. He does commercials for Papa John's Pizza. Yeah. So she goes, did you watch the Super Bowl last week? I go, yeah. She goes, well, he was the lead in the Papa John's commercial. Oh and and sure gosh. enough, I pulled up his reel and there he was. Oh yeah. I could not yeah. believe it. They raised yeah. a bunch of money on bad cookies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I fell for it. No. <laughs> and uh, Kenny and I would do these massive, 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 massive real estate investment things. You know, Trump would be there with us and all this. And Kenny and I came up with this one, what's our rule of thumb on Yeah, that? the bigger the brochure, the worse the deal. <laughs> I mean, well, because remember we were we were cruising along in the Javits Center in New York and these beautiful girls are standing there in front of these beautiful murals and they had these big brochures and they were trying to sell, you know, high rises in New York, right? Like floors or, or condos. And so we were gathering all this stuff before our talk and, and I said to Robert, I go, look how hard they're selling these, you know, like uh, it's true. And you have yeah. to pack well, that kind of Sure, like 25 bucks each. each. I know. I said, man, they're spending a lot of money to try to sell one of these. I haven't seen one brochure from you yet, Kenny. Yeah, and you won't. No, because you don't have to. People, really, people line up to give Kenny money. Yeah, yeah. So and if you're good, that's what happens. That's right. Yeah, good. Here's the reality. If, if there's a lot of money trying to find good deals. And when you do find one, uh, professional investors know the difference. And this is what they'll learn at the event is you have to know what to ask.
and John and I will be there in person. You'll be there in person. Yep. Who else are you having there in person? Uh, Tarl Yarber, who's uh, you know uh, the uh, my partner in this. Uh, uh, we're having uh, Brandon Turner from Bigger Pockets. He's coming. You know, he's a big, big personality. We we love Brandon, Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup of the Soul, all the real estate advisors. I've got um, some legal guys. We've got some crypto guys. We got some. We got a lot of local entrepreneurs. We got the guy who founded LifeLock, uh, Todd. Uh, we got some athletes that uh, made a lot of money and made some bad decisions and good decisions. Uh, so uh, it's going to be fun. And then you have what, a kid. How who, he's already a millionaire. Uh, Fourteen. He's not quite, but he will be by the end of the year. So we want him come in. We're having him and his dad. Uh, you know, and he did it through business and real estate. Uh, but but obviously he coached with his uh, parents. So he's. Um, you know, I mean, he read all your books, Robert. He can't wait to meet you. And, and so, you know, there's there's some really, really cool people showing up that are um, that are that are taking action. So uh, this is for people who are already moving along. If you're an FNG, don't come because it'll just frustrate you because you're already screwed up. There's something inside of you. Like I was talking to people I've known for years. So how much how much gold have you bought? None. How much silver you bought? None. How much real estate have you done? But we read your book. Yeah. And I go nuts. That means there's something really effed up inside of you. I mean, you have a you have a definite block to be poor. And that's a lot of people out there, right, John? I mean. Oh yeah. Majority of them. If so, if you can't get off of the ground zero, don't come. Because you'll just sit there and go, oh, yeah, 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 John, I promise I'll do that. And what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. Right. And so that's not for you. Please hear me. I, I was, you know, my charming temper, I lost it several times. I said, you haven't done anything in the 17 years you've been with me. Yeah, but I talk about your book all the time. And I just lose it. That's my family. They don't do shit. They're highly educated people, know all the answers, but they cannot do something differently. So this is not for you. So Kenny, when's the event again? It's June 9th, 10th, and 11th right here in Scottsdale. And uh, it's at the Westin, and it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're gonna also going to have some entertainment and some happy hours and some networking and it, it's going to be fun. Nice brochures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but if you use the promo code rich dad, what happens? Uh, you, you get a 10% discount on the tickets and uh, tickets are going up every month uh, all the way up to the event. So, uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure that, um, I think we're over half sold already and we just rolled this out. So when we come back, we'll have Miss Sarah here, have her comment because, um, uh, She's been really good hanging out with a lot of testosterone this weekend, <laughs> especially with Rollo and all the bunch of characters here. So when we come back, again, the Rich Dad Company is about financial education. We don't give you advice or tell you what to buy. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Today we're talking about the Limitless Expo Dot com, and you can use promo code Rich Dad for a discount because the price keeps going up every day. And the event is June 9th, 10th, and 11th. Three action packed days. Again, this is not for newbies, this is for people who are actually taking action right now. And it's June 9th, 10th, 11th at the Western Carolin in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'll be there. Kenny will be there. A lot of advisors will be there. Real people will be there. But this is not for amateurs who are cannot get off of grounds. They cannot do something different. You've got to be actually in action here. So once again, Rich Dad is about financial education. We don't give advice. We don't tell you what to buy or not buy. I tell you what I do buy and I tell you why I don't buy certain things. But it's about education. And um, that's really what it's about. So our guests will be, John McGregor will be one of the speakers. He's the author of the top 10 reasons the rich go broke. John, what do you think you'll be talking about at this event? I know it's a ways off yet, but... Uh, yeah, we were just talking about it off mic, but, um, you know, when Kenny called me a couple of weeks ago and he said, hey, you, you interested in speaking? I was like, I mean, I looked at the lineup and, you know, we've done a lot of speaking together around the world. And I looked at the lineup of speakers that Kenny put together. And I mean, this is an all star group of very high class, high educated, high passionate people. So real, people. Like, real, real people, real people, real investors. Yeah, they're gonna, th this is all about the real deal of, of what's going on in the real world. I think your target market is somebody who has a 401k or an IRA 
and wants to know how they're getting screwed. No question about it. Will you go into how they're getting screwed? 100%. I'm going to expose exactly what's going on, what they're, what, what they don't know, because I've seen it. Most people have no idea what's going on with their money, how it's being managed, what they're being charged, all these slick jargon terms like fiduciary and what that really means. Um, so we do better when we pick your pocket. <laughs> yeah. you know. I'm going to show you the dark side of the dark side. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And he won't, he won't serve chocolate chip cookies <laughs> or rubber chickens. Kenny, you put this whole deal together. What, what is your motive for doing this deal? Again, it's June 9th, 10th, 11, Western Carolina, Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, there's been several. One is, um, you know, people I think are looking for live events again. You, you know, they're, they're getting a lot of great education on YouTube. So I was cool because I, I went on YouTube and I'm, I'm hand selecting people that have big followings that I, that I like. And uh, so we, we basically put together an all-star team like that, uh, people that are teachers and not selling anything. And, and so the number one rule was no selling from stage, period. You know, this is not a, you're not there to pick, people's power to educate. Yes. And, and, uh, so that was the number one rule and I'll be up there, man, like yelling at people if, 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 if it even goes there seriously. So that's, you know, this is about, you know, what should we do next? And well, uh, the biggest uh, crash is coming. See, I, if you do want to do the same thing again, I think you're hosed. Correct. Yep. And that's, that's what, that's what concerns me. I've been, you guys know, I've been preparing this for years and years and years. Say it's coming. But we, we all read and watch and watch videos. And I mean, every week and, and every week my mind's changing a little bit on something. And it's, it's based on a different video, like George Gammon, who's going to be there by the way. And he, you know, his last video, just as an example on, on how Russia's going to pay for, uh, or ask for gold or, or, you know, different kind not petrol dollars, you know, on the oil part is, it just kind of blew my mind. So th you're going to have these people there. They're going to be talking about what, you know, what they see moving next. Uh, you know, and, and I, I think you're right, Robert. I, I, we're, we're heading into some real, real rough, rough waters here. Cause George says it really clearly. He says America stopped producing and started blowing bubbles. And John will know we're in the biggest bubble I've ever, I cannot believe this. I cannot how big. So they just keep cutting interest rates and printing more money. And now they're going to raise interest rates. We're at war and people are still going to do the same thing. So when that young woman came, I think I'll get a real estate license because I don't like my job. I said, well, this is not the time, <laughs> but I can't talk to her. I mean, you know, she's been sold the, the fiduciary, you know, so yeah. this is not for newbies. No. And in, in times of trouble, uh, people save which is the opposite of what you should be doing, you know, heading into inflationary times. Well, it depends on who you are. You know, I that's, know. That's the thing yep. because we had Bob Waterman here from KRLD in Texas. And the first time I started speaking from stage, he put me next to Susie Orman and I like oh, Susie, oh. but there's an audience for her. It's not what I speak to. And most people really should follow Susie Orman. Although I don't think it works. But you should follow the same as what's that other guy's name? Uh, Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey lived debt free. I mean, we're in debt up to our freaking eyeballs, man. Yeah, and trust me, that debt is where Good. you want to where you want to be yeah. right now, based on the current tax conditions. free money right. and all this stuff. But you shouldn't do what we do, correct? Unless you're willing to take action. So we have Miss Sarah here. She's always she's been here with a bunch of testosterone guys all weekend. And uh, I'm glad you balance us all out. So Sarah, what what do you think is going to happen? What do you think? What do you think about what we're saying about the Limitless Expo? Well, it sounds like a ton of fun. I was going through the uh, lineup while you guys were talking, and you have people like Tom Wheel, right? He's going to talk about taxes. taxes. I mean, it's like a well-rounded group. So you're not just going for real estate, which is what Kenny's probably most known for. Um, oh, what I was going to say is I've seen like Devon Kennard. He's a Arizona Cardinals. We've had him on the show. Um, he really pushes for financial education for athletes um, because he sees, you know, obviously it's a big problem. So he's a real estate investor, but he also has his book club. So he's all about education. Um, we've seen George Gammon speak. Uh, Seth so, Joyner. Seth Joyner. Yeah. yeah. Seth so, Joyner is going to be on. He, he's speaking. And, well, who's Seth Joyner? Yeah. Well, Seth is um, he, he's Hall of Fame. Uh, Philadelphia for Eagle. the Eagles, and he's up for the NFL Hall of Fame. And um, he's retired now, but he um, made a lot of money and made a lot of mistakes, but also made a lot of really good decisions. And um, so he's going to talk about you know what it's like to get a lot of money as a young man. 
So and let's, let's, let me tell the story because what was her name from the NBA asked us to speak to? Chrissa. Chin. Chrissa. And she says, when you're a, you're a college kid and you go signed by the NBA, what is she says? Yeah, she said, you all of a sudden get a lot better looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in money. Oh, you're an NBA player. Yeah. I think I like you a little yeah. bit better now. Cha -ching, anyway. Cha -ching. So, yeah, so I'll put the link to LimitlessExpo.com in the description. Um, use code RICHDAD, and uh, we'll see you June 9th through the 11th. So thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. And remember, this is going to be one of the most exciting times in world history. Unfortunately, everything's going to change. Take care.